about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to It is on the strength of this truth. Thank you. You access the power of God and you begin to walk in such level of victory. One level and dimension of victory to the other. One level of victory and you see by this your life shows in truth that the victory of christ over sin over death over satan was absolute and true creation is waiting for the richness of the manifestation of god's power and grace in and through your life to validate the reality of every claim that jesus made in and through his finished work that means I can become a poor representation of the victory of Christ through the plethora of defeats that my life command. My life can be so defeated, it does not look attractive to be a Christian. I can misrepresent the purposes of God. So every time I contend for superior dimensions of these mysteries, it is to the end that we become empowered and then we become trophies, if you would use that expression. That men can look at our lives and say, no, it pays to subscribe to this government. Are we together? In business, we teach that the greatest way to market is to tell the truth. There's no fear when you are telling the truth. Is that true? When you package and you lie, you are afraid of the truth being discovered. So if we are marketing a God to our world, we are marketing Jesus Christ and we are telling the world he is the way, he is the truth and he is the life. They will say we may not be able to see him but let's look at you who are seeing him and let's look at what he has done to you. From the assessment of your victory, the quality of your life, it is safe for us to now conclude if this your Jesus is a better alternative to the charm that I've been using. If this your Jesus is a better alternative to this God I'm serving. Nobody lives better for good. Nobody lives best for better. So if we are selling a Jesus to our world and letting them know that he is savior. He is mighty. The ancient of days. We must be able to present him in a way and manner. That dumbfounds principalities and powers. It is on this strength, the Bible says, Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10, to the intent. This is why he's blessed us so richly with all these mysteries. To the intent that now, unto principalities and powers in heavenly places, might be known by the church, his bride, his body, the manifold wisdom of God. Are we together? Yes. Distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us. Ask and now give the nations to you, O oh Lord. That's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands will see. You know why we teach this we teach these truths number one because God loves us and he wants us to experience the highest level of victory 
that our obedience can afford us in this side of God's kingdom and in this side of eternity. But number two, we do these things because there is a world that is watching and they are depending on the testimony of God's grace upon our lives for the decision that affects their eternal destiny. Are we together? Have you seen marketers of products? Look up, please. There are a few people here, some of you may be you know company owners and you have all kinds of products and services and look the level of training that goes in to teach the marketers because you are about to defend the image and the interest of a company you are marketing a product that probably expires after six months or after two years and look the skill that goes in make sure you're well suited make sure your communication is is very articulate make sure you smile whether you are tired or not look at all that skill we employ the people, give them a salary, motivate them, and send them. And even when they see their classmates, or their loved ones, or their brothers on the street, they are not even as, they are so proud of what they are selling. And yet the validity is just six months. The validity is just two years. But we are selling something here that has the eternal destiny of men. Listen carefully. It is truly evil. To refuse your life from commanding certain levels of results because by doing it you are the the destiny of millions are depending on your results so if you truly love God don't just say I love God you must contend for superior levels of results let your light so shine before men I need to put this in perspective because many times when they hear preachers talk like this um, there is a spirit of religion that will usually want to fight people when they teach to empower people once it is not a talk about Jesus and a direct talk about holiness and righteousness respectfully speaking a lot of people frown at it and they feel you are wasting people's time no we teach the whole counsel of God. Everything together, they will weave themselves and add up to the revelation of the Christ and the glorification of the same. We have been marketing Jesus wrongly. That's why the world has been slapping that gospel back at our face. We need to reinvent our strategy. Come up with power. Come up with results. Nobody runs away from what works. Are we together? So I need to say this because there are many people who want to receive these truths. But the spirit of religion can loom around people's hearts and not let them to be equipped. And they go blindly with zeal that does not have knowledge. Oh, I want to serve Jesus. And they die like chickens because they are not equipped with the requisite level of spiritual knowledge that keeps them in victory. I believe in the whole counsel of God. Look the kind of bride that Jesus is coming for. Come and I will show you the lamb's wife. And he showed me a city equal in length, equal in breadth, equal in depth. No exaggeration. That is the lamb's wife. That is the bride that he's coming for. He's not coming for some lopsided bride. There is no bride who does not adorn herself very well on the wedding day. There is no bride who forgets her makeup, forgets her shoe and just comes to stand. No matter how much you are in a hurry. If you want to present yourself as that bride, get serious about every aspect of your spiritual life. Get serious about every aspect of your destiny. If God tells you, I want to use your resources to glorify Jesus, then ensure that those resources are to the degree that can command kings. Can I tell you this? The arrogant world that we live in will depend on a high level of results for the kings of the land to hear you. Ordinary people can hear you no matter what you are saying. But our target is not just the people. We also need the kings. Because the kings have influence. Look what happened to Zacchaeus. One encounter with Jesus saved many people who he had defrauded. Are we blessed? These are principles of kingdom advance. We have a series on that. But for now, it's important for you to submit to embrace the whole counsel of God. 
there are demons there are arsenals of darkness hear me brothers and sisters they are going to come and attempt to attack your life but you need the truth of god's word the bible says write this down psalm 11 from verse 9 the b part proverbs 11 i meant to say from verse 9 the b part it says through knowledge shall the just be delivered through knowledge submitting to spiritual knowledge is indicating your interest to truly be delivered and to walk in victory so divine intervention is real it's a spiritual arsenal that must be part of our equipping as believers is part of the forces that make us matured and help us thrive and reign in life and tonight very quickly i'm going to give us four keys four keys that command divine intervention in the life of an individual in the life of a family use these keys and you will triumph bringing glory to the name of the lord bringing honor to the name of jesus christ are you ready key number one prayer key number one the first key that makes for divine intervention you want to see the power of God come to change negative circumstances over your life. You want to see the power of God come to establish positive outcomes in your life to the end that Jesus be revealed and be glorified. The first key is prayer. The priesthood ministry of prayer. Psalms 18. Please give us the first six verses. We'll do a few readings. So please be patient. Psalm 18 from verse 1 to 6. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. Next verse. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God and my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler, the horn of my salvation, my high tower. We're reading to verse 6 and then I'll mention a few verses. We'll just jump to them. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Uh-huh. The sorrows of death compassed me, and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. Verse 5. The sorrows of hell compassed me about, and the snares of death prevented me. Verse 6. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and I cried unto my God, and he heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him, even into his ears very quickly jump to verse 14 14 17 and then go to verse 40 for time's sake yea he sent out his arrows and scattered them and he shot out lightnings and discomfited them verse 17 he delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me for they were too strong for me go to verse 40 Thou hast also given me the necks of my enemies, that I might destroy them that hate me. Next verse. We are reading to 50. Please quickly. They cried, but there was none to save them, even unto the Lord. But he answered them not. 42. Then did I beat them small as the dust before the wind. I did cast them out as the dirt in the streets. Uh-huh. It says, Thou hast delivered me from the strivings of the people, and thou hast made me the head of the hidden. A people whom I have not known shall serve me. 44. As soon as they hear of me, they shall obey me, and strangers shall submit themselves unto me. We're reading to 50. The strangers shall fade away and be afraid out of their close places. The Lord liveth and blessed be my rock and let the god of my salvation be exalted it is god that avenged me and subdueth the people under me he delivered me from my enemies yea thou liftest me up above those that rise up against me thou hast delivered me from the violent man two more verses therefore i will give thanks unto thee O lord among the heathen and sing praises unto your name verse 50 great deliverance giveth he to his king and showeth mercy to his anointed to david and to his seed forevermore deliverance listen to me in my distress 
I cried. He didn't just come. I called him in prayer. The ministry of prayer is very, very powerful. Write this down for reference. Acts chapter 12, please. From verse 5 is a popular scripture here to 11. This was Peter when he was bound, kept in prison. Here's what the Bible says. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. As a result, um, Herod now wanting people to come and kill him the next time. And then verse 7 says that behold an angel of the Lord in response to prayer came unto him. A light shined in the prison. He smote Peter saying arise and his chains fell from his hands. Uh -huh. And the angel said unto him, guard thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, cast thy garment about thee and follow me. We we'll read down to 10. Let's go to 10 very quickly. The Bible says when they were past the first and the second word or gate, they came to the gate that led to the city, which opened unto them of his own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street and forth with the angel departed from him. Last verse. The Bible now says, and when Peter was come to himself, he said, now I know of a shorty that the Lord had sent his angel and had delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectations of the people. God does not just deliver you from men. He delivers you from expectations. Are we together? But that happens at the instance of prayer. In Acts chapter 16, when you read from verse 25 down to 34, the full text, we may not read everything. The Bible talks about Paul and Silas. Are we together? On account of a lady who they delivered, who used divination to bring money for people. And now, one thing led to the other. They were in the prison. Give it to us, please. Acts chapter 16 from verse 25. Here's what the Bible says. At midnight, pay attention. Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them 26 suddenly my deliverer is coming my deliverer is standing by your deliverer is coming your deliverer is standing by please keep the scripture suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately how many doors financial doors health doors ministry doors business doors doors of your spiritual growth when it is a divine intervention it's not a few doors all doors open all doors open all doors open and everyone's band was loose 27 and the keeper of the prison awakening out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open he drew his sword and would have killed himself supposing that the prisoners had been fled now followed the result of divine intervention but Peter cried with a loud voice saying do thyself no harm for we are all here uh-huh and he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling as a result of that divine intervention he fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said sirs what must I do that is it to be saved that man's salvation was at the mercy of the result that intervention would bring every genuine intervention in the Bible eventually led to the salvation of men and drew men close to Jesus let's finish up he said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who now caused that intervention, and thou shalt be saved, and it will now affect your household. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. Are you seeing now? One divine intervention from the prison, now the man is saved, and his entire household. And he took the same, and he took them the same hour of the night, and washed their stripes, and was baptized he and all his straight away last verse 
and when he had brought them into his house he set meat before them the same person who flogged them is now feeding them and rejoiced believing in God with all his house whoever you want to lift Lord you can live through me whoever you want to bless Lord you can bless through me whoever you want to say Lord you can say the salvation of a man and his entire family not just depending on a crusade depending on someone's results but it came through prayer apostle james taught us in chapter 5 and verse 13 he says if any of you are afflicted let him pray the moment you sense that there is an affliction you came back home your children are sick your husband returns back and he says i don't know what is happening in the office you lost money in business everything gone they collected your land your property these are events that require divine intervention your first port of call is to begin to pray this is why god gave us the prayer language of tongues it's not a pentecostal issue the bible says we have a limitation the limitation is that we do not know what to pray for as we ought to but the holy spirit ah, he knows oh he knows how to make intercession so i lock myself while i am praying my mind may be unfruitful but there is the intercessory ministry of the holy spirit prayer praying in the spirit but not just praying in the spirit word-based prophetic declarations i'm showing you how to provoke intervention you cannot take the word of god out of the equation word based not superstitious prophetic declarations word based prophetic declarations two scriptures we're still talking on prayer isaiah 43 and verse 26 believers learn this 43 26 isaiah put me in remembrance he says let us plead together he says declare thou that thou might test be justified my hand is able to save my hand is able to lift but i'm waiting for you to declare hmm. yeah though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me you prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies anointing my head with fresh oil my cup runs over you are declaring I have no covenant with death in the name of Jesus I declare as for me and my house you are making declarations because you are seeing storms rising you don't keep quiet when storms rise the worst thing to do is to be silent hear me I'm speaking to you because there are people storms all around your life when they woke Jesus Christ he did not discuss with the storm peace be still halasuda parikatuskiata your spiritual life suddenly your fire for prayer down your passion for the word down favor down everything down you should know that you are surrounded that there is something that is the time to open up your mouth i decree and declare in the name of jesus the lord is my light and salvation this is not just a pentecostal thing it's a formula for victory Declare ye that thou mightest be justified. Oh, I reject death. I reject death in the name of Jesus. Don't feel bad and feel that's how this one said it and died. That's none of your business. You speak. You do your own part and declare over your destiny. I choose life. I set before you life and death. I choose life, I choose health, I choose victory by the Spirit of God. 
thousand shall fall by my side, ten thousand by my right side. But none shall harm me. With my eyes will I see the reward of the wicked. I arise and shine because my light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Gentiles come to my light. They are kings to the brightness of my rising. For my shame I receive double. Where I've been deserted so that no man help them please. Passes to me. I become an eternal excellency. A joy of many generations. prayer listen please sit down the moment believers learn this world over the moment you see an unfavorable situation in your life you know it is the devil because along with that situation will come the spirit of depression and the assignment of depression is to keep you silent listen to what I'm telling you I'm not a medical doctor I'm speaking as a man of God I know that depression has an assignment to keep you silent Satan is the master of the flesh realm so this is how my life will be I thought this will work I had a dream and I thought the job will come and you now keep quiet and the angels are saying look at this there is a law we are ready to move God is ready help them please God is ready to move Psalms 107 verse 2 These are the arsenals of victory Psalms 107 please very quickly Let the redeemed of the Lord If they are truly the redeemed Don't just think so Don't just wish so Say so Let the lifted of the Lord say so Let the blessed of the Lord say so Are you learning now? You return back and there is a medical report that is disturbing just when that is happening your child brings a result after spending so much on his school fees you see an evil report are we together the moment that is happening you just hear that your investment has crashed you're a politician they told you okay this is supposed to be your position you're a man of God you come to church and it looks like everything is going down that's not the time to be quiet and that's not the time to attract sympathy you are the first prophet of your destiny go and shut your door remove your ceo regalia put on that priestly robe shake up a rakatosia someone blast in the spirit in one minute i will be silent in the name of jesus christ Listen, listen, believers hear me, hold on, hold on. Do you know that many believers allow tragedy to mount until it presses them down? That's when they resort to God as a last option. And I will not be silent. I will always work. Listen, an evil report is happening. Your children are going haywire. As the man, you are not just ahead of the home for nothing. Wear your priestly regalia while your children are sleeping. Walk room by room. You are laying hands upon them, not my house. I build the spiritual fortification by prophesying. 
I decree and declare the foolishness of faith. I engage it. The righteousness of faith speaks on this wise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I will help you. Come and meet me tomorrow. And you come tomorrow and say, well, who asked you to come here? This favor. Just when you are going, you can't hit someone. Just when you learn to read the signs. Don't wait for evil to stay. Don't be along with evil. Attack it from infancy. Don't be along with evil. Attack it from infancy. Hallelujah. You go to bed in the night and you have a funny dream that you know already shows that there is an attack that the spirit of death is following people in your family listen don't just wake up and write it in a jotter and and then when it happens you say, no get up and say no way in the name of jesus I, if it followed my father and my father's father i come as a priest and a king and a priest what makes declaration Listen, it was it was God's servant Bishop David Oyedeko who said, No matter how mad a man is, he will not enter inside fire by mistake and say it's confusion. No matter how mad he is, when he sees fire, he says he makes his angels wings and his ministers flaming fire. You're sleeping and someone takes your name to a shrine for political reasons. Oh, let this person die or let this person not win. You don't have to go to the shrine right from where you are. Listen, believers hear me. This is not just some spiritual jamboree. The times that we live in, it will be risky to not know these truths and to not engage them. Your life literally hangs upon these truths. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Please sit down. Please sit down. Let me challenge you. I want to challenge every family here as much as God grants grace. Provided you and your wife are in agreement, set one day this week, even if it's for 30 minutes, hold your hands. Walk around that house. Identify anything that does not look like Christ. Zoom your tongues to it. Scatter it as if it does not exist. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Kelakusi abata. No, my womb will not give birth to armed robbers. As a woman, you lay your hands. Or sit down and watch things go bad. Just help those under the anointing. There is a strong anointing in this place. Because this is a message for the body of Christ. Divine intervention comes on the wings of prayer. A prayerless church, no matter what else you have, is a powerless church. A wordless church, no matter what you have, is a powerless church. The ministry of prayer and the word are the foundations of the true church. Listen to me. I'm not creating a doctrine out of this. But let me challenge you. Obtain grace from God to wake up in the night. Conquer slumber. The night time is when kings win, is when we establish victories. You're walking around your house in the night. The Lord told you you will be a senator. The Lord told you you'll be a governor. The Lord told you you'll be a CEO. And there are forces sitting down making decrees. You don't need to fight them. Go to your closet. This is how kings reign.
people of God hear me with every sense of humility that's how we got here I'm not telling you cunningly divide fables everything about your finances is dying scattering you are not lazy you are hard-working they are stealing from your shop they are cheating you they are lying counseling is not the solution alone go back and pray there is an evil force wanting to discredit god in my life i attack you in the name of jesus listen i don't promote the devil and i don't mean to market the devil but i have seen many demons I have seen many spirits by the privilege of my calling and the apostolic office i have been exposed to the realm of the spirit i understand scripture i have been well mentored by fathers of faith and veterans of the gospel the things you are hearing are not cunningly devised fables don't ignore it you will spend your lifetime paying the price we live in an evil world your portion will come to you by insisting from the days of john until now the kingdom suffered violence it is a violence that will take it by force can i tell you this there is no african family that is immune to witchcraft by default it's a lie if not by bloodline by territorial connection When we pray like this, we do not negate the finished work of Christ. We rather stand in partnership. Our prayer is our participatory role to establish it here and now. Listen, as powerful as God is, he did not cast sin out of men. He didn't say, sin, I cast you out. There are rules of engagement in the spirit. As for me, I've made up my mind god gave me this mouth not only to eat but to create my destiny and i insist for my life for this ministry silence is not just shouting and jumping around no 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 an intentional approach to your growth take responsibility listen body of christ thank god for the vessels god has given us but we must become serious and mature to become the first prophets of our destiny go and lock your door pray for me pray for me is good but you must take authority over your situation by the power of the holy ghost dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.